this video will talk about a model for a general bacterial population growth. Okay, so let's say we had you know, our classic petri dish full of bacteria, and we want to think about how, you know, how is this population growing in the first place, right? So each bacterial cell, right? So this would be like a parent cell, right? And each parent cell is going to split into two daughter cells. Daughter cell one, and then daughter two. Okay. And so in this, you know, in this situation, right, this is the one we had before, but the population at time t plus one, so maybe this is measured in hours, so the population in the next hour, two times population the previous hour, because each, uh, each cell, each parent cell, splits into two, two cells. Okay, and so let's make this a little more general. So let's say that they split into two, but maybe not all of these cells survive, and then go on to produce their own offspring, or they don't survive the hour. Okay, so let's say that a fraction on average Fraction sigma survive, right? And then the same thing with the sigma survive, right? And then this would be like a surviving cell. Right, it's now survive. Okay, so in this case, we'll have r equals two sigma survive this generation. Okay, so then our new model would be p of t one is now RPT, where R is two sigma, right? So it doesn't necessarily have to be two, it could be like half of that or, or more than that, okay? And so in this case, right, our model solutions, right, or our system will depend on R, right, which we call the per capita growth rate. Right, so when we go to other types of population models, we'll still use a per capita growth rate, right? And you can think about R, you know, why is it called a per capita growth rate? Well, R really, you know, its dimensions are new cells per parent cell, right? So per capita means like per unit of population, right? So per parent cell, this is the number of new cells R, right? So it's our per capita growth rate, okay? And so let's do, let's just do an example. Right, so let's say we have a situation where, you know, maybe it's not a very nice petri dish, so, you know, 75% of the offspring survive. Right? In this case, we have sigma is equal to 0 0.75, which gives us r equals 2 sigma and be 1.5. So not quite doubling each hour, but still growing each hour, right? So then our model becomes P of T1, right? Population the next hour equal to R, P, which is now 1.5 population at time. So in this case, let's say we started with 100, right? Then P1 is going to be 150. So, you know, on, you know in general, you're going to have a 50% increase each hour. Okay, let's do maybe they're on an even more, um, let's say they're on an even more kind of perilous petri dish so that only 25% survive. Okay. So in this case, sigma is gonna be 0 0.25. So R is gonna be two sigma or 0 0.25. Five, right, so then our model for population growth is P, P plus one is equal to 0 0.5. Right, so in this case, if we started with the same 100 individuals, right, after one hour, we're gonna have 50 left. Right, so this is a 50% decrease each hour. Okay, and so, you know, maybe we don't have to, we don't want to have to do this uh, iteration every time, right? So recall that we talked about how to solve this system. Since it's simple enough, we're able to derive a solution to this time system, right? So recall, we covered this in a previous video that, you know, if this is our model, P of T plus one equal to R P T, 
then if we start with p0 individuals at time zero then after one hour right we're going to have r p0 okay and then after two hours we're going to have r p1 which is r squared p right so each time we iterate on that we multiply by a factor of r so on the t time step right pt is going to be r to the t right because we multiplied by r at every iteration of this map and we've gone through this map t times we've multiplied by r t times so this becomes r to the t times our original number, t zero okay and so let's examine you know the solution of this let's look at maybe r equals 2 r equals 1.5 r equals 1 and r equals 0 0.5 okay and we'll just kind of see what happens in each of these as we vary this growth rate, this per capita growth rate R. Let me switch over. Filter bra. Okay, so let's start with R equals two. So remember this plots the discrete time system, Xn plus one is the function of Xn, right? So this is the Xn versus X, Xn plus one graph. So here we write our update rule. So for this problem, it'll be two X. But in general, it'll be Rx, where R is our per capita growth rate. And let's start with one individual and see what this model predicts. Okay, so we start with one individual. We use this map. We can see that it's just going to keep growing and growing and growing. Okay, so on the right here, it's growing off to infinity. Okay, and so if I plot this, the solution versus time, right? I just copy and paste it from the previous window. So now this is time here and our uh, population is here. Right, so you can see it starts at one and it grows and then very quickly um, kind of exceeds. Right, it's just going off to infinity very quickly. It's doubling each time. Okay, so what happens if the growth rate is 1.5? Okay, so if this per capita growth rate is 1.5, we put 1.5 here. Right, so now uh, it's still going to grow off to infinity, but it's growing slower. Right, so if I look at this, you know, maybe you can't see it from here, but I'll copy and paste this into our plotter. Okay, so here's the data from the r equals 1.5 case. And here you can see it's growing off to infinity, right? If I zoom out, it's still growing off to infinity, but it's only growing by 50% each time. It's not doubling. So it's growing a little bit slower than the previous one. Right here at step two, it was already at four. Here at step two, it's barely bigger than two. Okay, so what happens if r is equal to 1, okay? Well, in this case, the update rule and the identity line are flat on top of each other, right? This is the identity. Any input gives you the same output, right? So anywhere we start, if we start at 1, we're going to stay at 1 for all time. If I start at, let's say, 5, I'm going to stay there for all time because the map just gives me the number that I entered, right? So in this case, each uh, cell is just, you know, splitting, but then only half of those offerings is the bride, so only one cell ends up at the end of the day. So one cell turns into one cell, so the population number that you start with is the number that you end up with after one time step. Okay? And so in this case, we start with one cell, we have one cell for all time. Okay? There's no growth, and there's no decay either. Constant population level. Okay, and then what happens if r is less than 1, right? If we have r equals 0 0.5, we start 1, oh, 0 0.5. Right, now if we cobweb, we can see that the solutions are going to decay to 0. Zoom in here, we start at 1, but because half of them, uh, actually less than half of them survive each round, so you end up with less cells than you had the step before, right? You end up with half the amount that you had before. So over time, you're going to end up with zero cells after enough time. Okay. And so if we plot this one, you can see that it decays from one down to zero. So it doesn't really make sense to think about like half a cell, but maybe you think of this as units of one million, uh, then it goes from like one million to half a million to quarter million and, and so on until it gets down to that. Okay. 
So then that gives us kind of a, some general, these are some examples of our specific values, but you know we can write these down in just kind of a general way. We'll go back to notes. Okay, so in this case, right, we saw that it increased to infinity. And same thing when r was 1.5, right, it increased to infinity. And here, population constant. And here, population decreased to zero. All right, so that's what happened in these four specific cases. But generally, this will always happen as long as r uh, satisfies some inequality, right? When r is bigger than one, then each cell is making more than one uh, offspring. So in this case, the population will always increase to infinity, right? So we're thinking about this as like my r value and the behavior of this model, bacterial population is described by this, right? So when r is bigger than one, population increases to one. Right, when r is exactly one, right? when r is equal to one, the population remains constant, right? Each parent cell is replaced by exactly one offspring. So the overall number stays constant. And then when r is less than one, right? Each parent produces less than one offspring overall after the survivorship has, has been factored in. So uh, when each parent is being replaced by less than one individual, then the population has to decrease to zero. Okay? And so we can think about this in terms of those uh, equilibrium points too, right? We have equilibrium stability, right? When r was bigger than one, right? If we go back to our plot, right? Right, when r was bigger than one, right, we had a, a equilibrium at zero, but if we started near zero, we grew off to infinity, right? No matter what we start with, as long as we're away from zero, we're gonna grow away from zero, so that means it's unstable. In this case, zero, make it blue, Zero is an unstable, an unstable equilibrium point. Okay, when r was equal to one, then our function, our update function, intersected our identity line everywhere. Right. So in this case, okay, when this was equal to x. Then it intersected everywhere, and no matter where we started, we we're going to stay at that population for all time. So in this case, you can think that um, you can think of this as saying that every point is an equilibrium, right? Because anything, when r is exactly one, then no matter what population you start with, you always end up with that population for all time. Right, so every point would be an equilibrium point, and stability doesn't really make sense. Right, because stability is really about what solution is nearby your equilibrium point. So if every point is an equilibrium point, then it doesn't really make sense to say that points are stable or unstable, because no solutions are moving anywhere. Okay, and when r was less than 1, right, our population decreases to 0. That means that p equals 0 is a stable equilibrium, right? Because all solutions or solutions nearby are going to go towards zero, okay?